It's the 1980s and a popular Christian TV show named Joy Junction airs on American households. Now the kids game show airs on the Christian television network and it's basically like the Christian version of Sesame Street. Now the location of the show takes place in a village where kids take part in a variety of games while learning lessons from the Bible. However, one duo stands out from the rest of the characters, Ron and Marty. Ronald William Brown is a Christian man who lives in a trailer in Whispering Pines, Florida. He's a ventriloquist for a living, and when he's not performing on Joy Junction, he does live shows for kids in churches, schools, and parties. In the community, he's known to be a fun and generous person. He invites them over to play games, picks them up and takes them to church, and even hosts a free pizza party every Wednesday for all the kids in the community. Later on May 23rd, 2012, a Kansas man named Michael Arnett is arrested by Homeland Security for possessing illegal photos and videos of minors. Now authorities find that he's been communicating with another person on the internet on yahoo.com. Michael goes by the name of CK underscore 366, Sweet Talker Linda, and Calf Keeper 2 to chat with a user named UE Lime. Once detectives access the chats, however, it is far more disturbing than they realized. Hundreds of images and videos of minors being bound, deceased, and being put in inappropriate positions. Now investigators track down of UE Lime by issuing a grand jury subpoena, which basically means that Yahoo is forced to give the user's email, location, and IP address. They soon pair up the email to a school system in Florida, finding a man named Ron who is listed as a puppeteer who performs for ages 5 through 8. They then run a background check where they find two prior incidents involving the puppeteer. His first report occurred in 1998, where Ron was pulled over for a traffic violation. Now the police officer spots a pair of young boys' underwear squeezed between the front seats, and when he is questioned about this, Ron simply stated that it was a piece of clothing for one of his puppets and was shortly set free. A second report was made by one of Ron's neighbors. She states that he's taking young boys in his car to church without parental consent. She'd also say that Ron would lock up all the boys' bikes and skateboards in his trailer and detail that Ron was a bit off. Now, July 17th, 2012, just two months after Michael Arnett's arrest, detectives find a website named cutedeadguys.net. There, they find a profile of a man named Ron from Florida. He states in his interests, I love them young and dead. I enjoy them fresh, but like to see them displayed in their caskets too. His bio then states that he has a strong attraction towards necro, which basically means he has a sexual liking towards the dead. Now Homeland Security then matches the IP of the user to Ron Williams and later issues a federal search warrant in his trailer. Officers then knock on his door, and when Ron opens up, he's taken out of his trailer and is held in handcuffs. They then proceed to search the trailer, where they find VHS tapes, DVDs, and a drive which all contain a variety of illegal pieces of media. They then step into Ron's bedroom, where they open a drawer and find a CD containing videos of a child, and next to it, a missing child poster. On Ron's computer, they find a folder named Kasten. Once they click it, they find photos of a young child being positioned inappropriately on the metal table. They then open up Yahoo and find that his screen name is, unsurprisingly, UE Lime. Ron later admits that he was part of a Yahoo strangle group where he regularly talks with the user CK underscore 366, Sweet Talker Linda, and Calf Keeper 2. These three usernames of course belong to Michael Arnett and the conversations they had were quite deranged. Ron tells Michael about a plan he has to kidnap a boy from his church and do unspeakable acts with him. Michael then recommends various methods to torture the boy, with the two getting excited over the intention of eating him. Ron then states that Michael actually tried to meet up with him in Florida, but states that he did not want to because he had no intention of living out these demented fantasies. Finally, in 2013, 
Ronald William Brown was sentenced to 20 years in prison. He's then registered as a sex offender and will never be able to have access to the internet or have any sort of contact with children ever again. Now, for some reason, some disagree claiming that the punishment was too harsh, considering the average sentence for this crime is only 8 years. However, the judge, James Whitmore, thinks differently. He states, Perverted is not a strong enough word to describe what you have been engaging in. The risk is that obsession becomes more than fantasy. At what point does that line between fantasy and the risk of threat get crossed? Now Ron's particular case is part of Operation Halitna. It's a multi-year international investigation, with Homeland Security being the ones in charge. Over 160 children have been found and rescued, with more than 50 perpetrators being brought to justice worldwide. Now Operation Halitna continues their efforts to put an end to this particular network of crime, searching through thousands of pieces of evidence. Sadly, they have no other choice but to read disturbing chat logs as well as view videos and images of children in an effort to see if these internet users are truly acting on their twisted desires. In the end, all I can really say is that Ronald William Brown should have taken his own advice. Well, they said, Marty, come over here and take a look at our pictures. So I walked on over there and I took a look. And do you know what it was? What was it, Marty? Well, it was in Arizona, I'll tell you that right now. Ron, they were looking at some dirty pictures and they wanted me to look too. You know, that kind of reminds me of a, a verse I'm thinking of in the Bible that's found in 2 Timothy 2.22. And it says that you should run away from anything that will give you evil thoughts. And as your companions, you should have friends who have pure and clean thoughts and will only give you good ideas. I decided to turn around and go right back home.